Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Erin, and today we get to continue Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. I can't believe we're already into part three of this game, and it feels like we haven't really done much of anything so far. At least not significant things. I feel like I'm really enjoying just wandering around the country and listening to stories, which is the main objective. <laughs> It's been really, really interesting and really cool. A lot of you seem to be enjoying it so far and that makes me really happy and really excited to continue because so am I. I really like this game. It's just so unique and so underrated, man. I mean, you can just tell how much work they put into this game and I'm, I really hope that by playing this game, more people will be introduced to it because it's just, I really am enjoying the ride so far and I think it's a, it's a game worth playing for sure. I just want this episode to be very chill and laid back because I've had a week. I just need some downtime and just something to relax me, I guess. And this game is very, very chill and laid back. It's just a good time. So that's definitely what I look forward to the most when playing this game is just the atmosphere of it and being so into the story and into the world where it's like all your worries go away and it's wonderful. It's hot. And that's really good though. <sighs> In the last episode, we talked to Mason, who I think was an army soldier, ex-army soldier, ex-soldier. He lost his leg and he was really depressed and uh, he wanted a few happy stories, but I could not deliver because apparently I'm just not stocked up on happy stories or funny stories or whatever he wanted. So I think it's a really good idea to explore the world first and then talk to characters because or at least gather enough stories before i'm ready to talk to characters because i ran into issues last episode when i talked to quinn again and i wasn't able to tell the stories that they wanted to hear so that was a bummer but i'm sure that just means i'll have another opportunity to talk to quinn and hopefully i'll have gathered enough stories by then to tell enough variety this thing is driving me crazy I think my goal for this episode is just to wander around a bit more and explore a bit more of the East Coast and make my way west. I'm just so excited to hear more stories. I'm really excited. I love this game so far. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. So let's not waste any more time and let's get back into this game. Okay, so we're back in it now. Um, this is a train, hop a train. And they said that I had risk of being beaten up by police if I do that. So I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Uh, let's hear a story here. This farmer's loitering beside a couple of crates of berries, idly watching the clouds go by. Waiting for the pickup, he says, trying to make small talk. Hey, you wanna hear a wild story? Absolutely. He starts telling you about the blessed lighthouse sanctuary where souls in love could find respite. It takes a couple of minutes, but suddenly you recognize it as a story about the two lighthouse keepers. Whoever told it to the farmer changed, well, a lot, but it's still pretty good. Okay, were they not in love? The two lighthouse keepers from the first episode. Weren't they in love? I, okay, maybe if I asked, maybe if I said something else in that conversation, they would be like, oh no, we're just friends. But it seemed like they were a thing. I guess they weren't. Where'd you hear that story? Oh, I can't remember, he says. I think I've known it for years, since I was a boy, for sure. Hmm. That can't be right. Leave him with his tail, or that story happened to me. Hmm. I don't know. Should I correct him? That story happened to me. It might be kind of disappointing. I don't know. Leave him with his tail, just because, like, well... I feel like the point of the game is to make the stories grow even further, even if it's not truly factual. But then again, the dire wolf was like, the best stories are the ones that are true. Uh, I'm gonna tell him the truth. That story happened to me. Bullshit! His laughter rings down the dusty road. You're a good joker, I'll give you that. Aw, uh, okay. Well, it didn't really matter anyway. <laughs> Aw, that's so sweet. Where souls in love can find peace. Uh, my inventory. Looks like I'm sleepy, I think. I think that's what that means. 
Um, I don't have- oh. Active stories. Oh, it shows- okay, okay, okay. So in the active story section it shows how much the story has progressed. So like this, the taxi ride one, that's like evolved to the- to its like greatest potential I guess. It's the best way to put it. Whereas these ones are just like starting to be retold. So I'll find another way to tell the lighthouse story. That makes sense. Okay, let's turn off all these. Just so I can focus on specific ones. Okay, so... Holy shit, this map is huge, man. This map is huge! Did we go to Maine yet? No, we started in Maine. Okay. So not every state has a city. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so there's still a few stories left in Pennsylvania. I want to get those and then go down to Maryland. I think that's I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's go over to Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm already in Pennsylvania. Um Oh, well, there's something over there. Let's go here. Hello. His clothes are expensive, but unkempt. A tailored jacket stretched and warped out of its best fit by long days on the road. His thinning frame weighs down the boxcar next to yours. You got a light, friend? Sure I do. You offer a match, which bends and nearly snaps as he scratches it against the pitted iron edge of the boxcar. Thanks, he mumbles, perching one last cigarette on his lip. So where are you going? Don't rightly know where I'm going. You notice how deeply wrinkled his clothes are. It's as though a huge hand plucked him from a high society party <laughs> and crumpled him up like a sheet of paper. Don't rightly know how I got going either. Why? They built a railway just past Missy Hudson's estate. Damned racket ruined our soiree. Might have been a few bottles of Armagnac too many when I walked down the tracks to tell them to keep it quiet. He drags on the cigarette. But you never see him exhale. Huh. Uh, wonder if he's doing all right. <laughs> I kind of hope that I see some of these characters again. Even if they're not like technically characters, they're just small stories. Uh, looks like I'm tired. But I will get to that in a second. Let's hear the story. These- oh god, he's terrifying. <laughs> these men lean against the wall of this hardware store, smoking and chatting. They wave you over. You heard this one before? They launch into a group of recitation of the Thunderbird people who fly when they fall from heights, interrupting one another in their excitement to tell it. Wait a second. You recognize this story. It's the story about the bridge builders. Someone's added to it in the meantime, though. What do you think? Asked one of the men, eyes bright. You think that really happened? Of course it did. Well, I'm not sure myself, he replies, but damn, it sounds wild. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So you can sort of play into it, or just, you know, tell them the truth. Depends on what you feel like doing, I guess. Is this a house I can sleep in? The man is the color of mill dust. His smile creases his face like folds in dough. He gestures you inside the dilapidated structure and shouts over the sound of driving wheels. You're welcome to sleep here. You don't want to rest by the river. Not in the evening. Insects. <laughs> Settle inside for a break. Man shoves the broken door closed behind you. The mill is warm, and the air is heavy with the powder kicked up by your entrance. You realize how easy it would be to drift off on this pile of sacks to the loud but constant sound of the grinding wheels. 
Hmm. Fight the drowsiness or sleep. Okay, so next time I get into a story, I have to figure out what the difference is between those icons. So there's that one and the sun there. And I don't know. I'm sure that depends on what story I'm going to get. Uh, is dependent on what I choose for the options here. So, uh, because there's not really like a way for me to get injured or anything. It's just, it, there's just a different way of, of hearing a story. So, um, uh, let's sleep. Pain sears your spine. <laughs> Why did you sleep at this ridiculous angle? Your back complains from being draped over the millstone. That's good the mill is totally abandoned. Its works long ago disconnected, or your legs would have been pulverized. <laughs> the man is gone. Oh. <laughs> this is not a place to linger. Move on. Yeah, yeah, it was probably not a good idea to sleep there. So, let's see. So, I guess next time I'll do something with the Queen of Cups because I need more stories in that category, I guess. Same with Justice. I don't have any in that category. So, I guess I'm just trying to fill up as many as I can. So, I really need sleep. Is this... Hopefully, I can rest here. I don't know search this place. Oh, cross. Oh, wait, no, no. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Go back. Go back. Okay. I'll do this and then take a car, maybe hitchhike further down. The lightning starts in the next valley over. Then the wind picks up. The long grass hisses. And suddenly, it's raining so hard you can barely breathe without a hand over your mouth. Yikes. Search for shelter. The lightning momentarily illuminates a farmhouse on the opposite hilltop. The only one for miles. Much closer, though, is a silhouette of a dilapidated barn. Uh, okay, um... Head for the house? Uh, I feel like the barn is gonna be kinda creepy. There's probably someone in the house. Oh, head for the house. You pound and pound on the door of the house, but you only get confused shouts from inside. Soon, you give up and head to the unlocked shed, where the empty wood bin makes a good enough bed. At least it's dry. In the morning, you're woken suddenly by the sound of clattering china. A tiny old woman bends over you, Silently offering you coffee. She serves you half the pot before she lets you get up and leave for the morning. Aw. Thanks, lady. The storm that caught me outside. That was sweet. That could have ended very badly. <laughs> finding... Just finding a random stranger skeleton man in your barn. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go that far west just yet. Holy crap, there's so much. There's so much. Okay. Oh man, I need to make these episodes a little bit longer, I think, or else I'm going to be playing this game forever. Which I don't mind, but... Uh, let's go down to Virginia. West Virginia is down there. Ohio, West Virginia. Okay. Oh, I have a little directional arrow at the bottom here. Does that help? Okay, so I'm facing the East Coast right now. So I'm gonna wanna go, like, southwest a little bit. Okay. Hey, thanks, man! Appreciate it. Ooh. There's Detroit over there, so Michigan's right there. Mm. Let me out! Let me out! No! Wait! Let me out! Get me out of the car! Lady! How did I even fit in the car? I don't wanna go this far! <laughs> <laughs> Let me out! Oh my god. She's driving me to the city? I don't want to go to Chicago! That's too far! Oh, come on. It's gonna take me so long to get back to where I want to go. Ooh! Okay, whatever. Man, you should be able to get out of the car whenever you want. That's kind of bullshit.
shit. That's so far where I- <laughs> That's so far away from where I wanted to go. Oh, whatever. I'll just do Michigan and then like, make my way back east. Cause I wanna make, like, go east to west. I know it sounds stupid, leave me alone. <laughs> okay, there's a story right here, I'll just do this and then... You've seen migrant camps before, and they tend to look like the town dump. This one, though, on a good day, this could pass for a town. Wander around. Starched white tents stand tall and many, and a stroll through the grounds finds you neither trash nor trouble. You hear some chatter from a large tent on your left. On your right, a tent in the shadow of the trees emanates a soft buzz. Uh, am I gonna get attacked by bees? Uh, let's go to the large tent. A bespectacled man reads from a black binder to an audience of about two dozen migrants. At this time, he says, Mr. Martin vacated the chair in favor of new chairman, Mr. London. Mr. Lake was elected vice chairman. Mr. Lake was elected chairman of the finance oh, committee. this is boring as hell, but stay and listen anyway. Mr. Horner and Miss Clive were the other members on the finance committee. Mr. Lake gave an instructive talk on the duties of that committee. <laughs> Mrs. James displayed a lamp left by a camper, which she suggested should be resold. Mrs. Schwartz made a motion that this be tabled until the next meeting. I'm just going to keep listening. Total collection for the month, $143.70. Balance at the first of the month, $84.89. Deposits, $173. Bank statement balance, $248.07. I'm still listening to this, but I the guess The speaker I'll... pauses to turn the page. And in that moment, he finally notices you, standing at the entrance. What did you hear? <laughs> he says coldly. Every head in the place turns to face you at once. And you beat a retreat. Oops. Strangely clean tent city you found. Um... People seem to be pissed off at me. I should have listened to the buzzing. I feel like that would have been more interesting. Let's go up to the top of Michigan and then make our way back down to wherever it was I wanted to go. Okay, what's this over here? The storm swept in just before sundown, heralded by a purple sky and electricity in the air. You sought shelter alongside a grizzled farmer all he can do is pace, muttering to himself. Can't just stay here. You catch. Gotta find her. Who? He looks up at you. My daughter was... My daughter was out down the road. He balls his fists. God, fuck this. <laughs> he hauls open the door, shielding his face from the fierce dust. He runs out into the storm. Try to help him. The dust scours your skin, and razor winds whip at your clothing. You struggle for breath. The maelstrom has turned the world murky red. You don't see the farmer. I guess I'll keep going. You press on through oh, the no. storm. You see the farmer up ahead. He's on his knees. A great, dark shape made from swirling dust looms over him. Shout a warning. You manage no more than a cough. The dust thing engulfs the man in his body. The storm whips faster. You can't breathe. You have to get back to shelter. Run. You make it to safety, but don't manage any sleep. The storm settles in the early hours. You find the farmer laid out in the street, his corpse a shriveled mass. He has one arm stretched out in front of him, as if to crawl. 
Uh, that sucks. He was just trying to find his daughter. That sucks. But I feel if I stayed, okay, I lost some health it looks like. Oof, okay, how do I get health back? I think I have to go eat something. Tori. I don't have much money. My health is down. Um, crap. Okay, well let's look at the story up here and then I'll go get something to eat, I think. I don't know if if I stayed in that car. I mean, obviously I wouldn't have been hurt, I don't think. As opposed to going outside and trying to help him, but I mean, poor farmer guy. Let's go in here. Ride with us a little while, stranger. It's a kind offer. Miles of dusty road through the rolling prairies have recast this landscape as an exhausting soup of wind and misery. Climb aboard the wagon. There are four of them on the wagon. A perfect nuclear family. Mother, father, son, daughter. And a small fuzzy terrier trailing behind. But the pace of their movement is glacial. The draft horse ambles forward one agonizingly slow step at a time. Why so slow? Ain't no point rushing to get where we are going. The wooden cart shivers with every pebble on the road that its wheels must laboriously traverse. The girl in the back pipes up. The going's the point, see? <laughs> Uh, let's keep with the cart. They seem like nice people. Time stretches wearily. The father sometimes makes half-inch adjustments to the horse's trajectory, keeping him from ambling off the road. There is some intimation that they are heading for Oregon, but at no point is it mentioned when they might arrive. Okay, the slow going cart. All right, people. Good for them, I guess. Why does it feel like I'm always picking the wrong options in this game? <laughs> Every time. Okay, let's stop in Detroit and hopefully get something to eat. What's that weird feeling in the air? Something between dread and frantic optimism, maybe. Everywhere you look, there's looming factories filled with churning machines and, and new unions, they say. Uh, let's earn money first. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. I don't know what panhandle is. Let's try that. No luck. Hard hearts in this town. Whether from thrift or scorn, you can't tell. Time to go, probably. Aw, damn! Okay, so it's basically just, like, begging, I think. Okay. Damn! Alright. The rain is coming down so hard. It's a wonder the sidewalk hasn't started to crack. You manage to find a narrow patch under a ledge where you can stay dry. Watch, um, oh. <laughs> wait out the rain. A squat man bundled up in a black fur coat and matching hat approaches. The thick rain flattens and mats his fur. He squints up at you. You're in my spot. <laughs> he crows. I want to refuse to move, but at the same time, if I get beat up, I feel like I'm going to die. So, oh, I want to... What a jackass. Give up the spot. He thanks you as you step aside back into the rain. You keep walking, hoping to find more shelter. Glance back. Now that you see the man from a distance... You're not sure the fur is a coat. A pair of red eyes shine mm. back at you. Keep the walking. Rain stops a minute later. You look back up the road. But the squat man is gone. Oh shit. The red creature in the fur coat in Detroit. Huh. Coney dog. Let's just get a PB and J. No. Let's get this. There's so much chili in this hot dog, you can barely find the dog. Amazing. <laughs> Alright, it looks like I'm full on health now, I think. Perfect. But I'm completely out of money, so... That's great. 
What's over here? She waits by the ruined mill in an overcoat two sizes too big. Look, look, over here, look at this, she yells. This only happens once every 10 years, for Christ's sake. <laughs> she grabs your hand, and you both look at the black gear rolling west to cover the sun. Look at it, obviously. Steadily, the darkness draws across the sun until it is almost total. She clutches your hand tightly. I've never seen this before. I've never seen this. The, the sun, obscured, throbs and expands, raging against the night. Uh, look away has a little heart symbol, and I wonder what that means. Maybe if I look at the sun, it's like an eclipse, right? So if I look at it, you're not supposed to look at the eclipse with your, <laughs> just your bare eyes. Look away. You know it's dangerous to do that. Yeah. You avert your eyes and make her do the same. She looks at you, out from under the brim of her hat, with wide eyes, deep and dark like black buttons, in her brown, weathered face. <laughs> Look at her. The cast of shadows rises up her body. She closes her eyes and, nervously, kisses you just lightly her lips slightly wet and barely parted her hand touches your cheek she softens widens the darkness blacks out you both oh the strange woman who shared a moment with you in the eclipse that was so sweet we got a little kiss are you happy skeleton man He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really cute. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't keep looking at the eclipse with your with your eyeballs. Search this. The girl tilts her basket away to hide whatever is inside. You want to see what I got? I'm not telling. She raises her eyebrows, encouraging you to pry further. This girl is either very confident or too young to know shyness. Um, I feel like she's gonna kind of get a little, like, pushy about it if I show, like, oh, I don't want to see it. She's gonna want to show me even more. Show disinterest. I don't want to see it. Oh, you're not being fun. It's really worth seeing. She twists her lips to one side, mimicking a more adult, thoughtful gesture. Tell you what. I'll show you what's in the basket if you do something for me. All right, I, I'll do what you want. Excellent. I want you to kill my mother. She looks to check if you're paying attention, then points to a figure working at the other end of the field. She's boring. She keeps making me work when I want to play. Uh, what the fuck? The girl bursts into peals of laughter. She doubles over the basket, laughing so hard she's barely able to stand. When she can speak again, she says, <laughs> You should have seen your face. You really should. She beckons you over, shows you her basket. Is it going to be like her mother's head in there? <laughs> Lift the cloth. Three kittens snuggle up at the Aww. bottom. They're barely old enough to open their eyes. Ma gave them to me for being good. I've called them Badb, Matcha, and Anand. After a story Nana told me. She preens. I'm very clever, you know. Sure, girl. Those sound like demonic names. The girl with a basket of kittens. Oh my god. <laughs> she was a little terrifying for a second there. I was like, um, I don't think I'm gonna kill your mother. No thanks. Um, let's go back down to Ohio. Yeah. Let's go this way. What's this place? 
Huh. Search this. She's getting married. The soldier tells you. The two of you observe the church from the dusty road, straining to hear the faint joy of the ceremony transpiring within. I fought for ten years to come home, because she said she'd be here, waiting for me. And look, can you believe it? Damn, that sucks, bro. Uh, no, I can't believe it. I don't know her. So what am I supposed to do? What does she expect? That I should throw myself from the nearest cliff? Walk into the ocean? He snorts. Sets off down the road. Uh... Wait behind her, follow him. Let's follow him because I'm kind of worried if he's going to hurt himself. He seems surprised to see you a few steps behind. No. No. He says. Where I'm going, you can't come. It's only then that you notice. There's something very wrong with his eyes. Um, I feel bad. I feel like he was gonna kill himself. I'm gonna continue. Oh, I just want to see who's at that campsite. Huh. Looks like it's someone I haven't met before. Let me... Collect a few more. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna collect the rest of the stories in Ohio, and then I'm gonna meet that guy at the campsite. So let me see this real quick. Haven't we met this guy before? Just a moment there, he says, shaking your hand. I'm Paul Dalhart from the Republican Herald. You may have heard of it. Syndicated in six counties. Never heard of it. Well, no matter. But listen. You may have noticed a vocal few out there, I call them naysayers, who throw up their hands and fly the white flag as soon as life gets a little tough. But wouldn't you agree that it's never been a better time to live and do business in this country? It's the Great Depression. No, it's not. Ha! Pessimism! Negativity! Faint-heartedness! He claps his notebook shut. If there is to be an end to the Great American Experiment, It'll be your attitude that writes it, not mine. <laughs> sure, dude. News reporter with strictly positive views. I'm, I wouldn't call myself an optimist. I also wouldn't call myself a pessimist either. But like, it is not, the Great Depression was not a fun time to live in America. <laughs> or anywhere. Let's continue this story. Let's hear this story. Listen to this. It's a boy loitering outside this grocery store. He works his way through a long and strange story about the Leatherman, whose ghost haunts Connecticut. There, he finishes. What do you think? Wait a minute. Holy shit, you know this story. It's the story of the Leatherman's cave, but wildly altered. For a couple minutes, you're too surprised to respond. Seriously, the boy insists. What do you think about that one? It's a great story. He smiles sheepishly. Thanks, he says. I heard it from my brother. <laughs> Leatherman's cave. Whose ghost haunts can I? Okay, so he isn't actually a ghost. We found that out, but now people are saying that he is. That's kind of funny. Let's look through here. The car is a lifeline. Another one. Your one hope to escape the encroaching storm. It rattles along a few yards ahead of the storm front, jouncing and juddering. One pothole away from being swallowed by the choking dust. A figure clings to support straps mounted on the back. Catch a ride. You grab the straps and haul yourself up. Oh! Shouts the woman on the back. A fellow observer. She's wrapped in a scarf and aviation goggles juggling a pen and a notebook while hanging onto the unsteady car. The dust scours your face and rips at your clothes. Can't we go faster? We're not done with our observations. She threads one arm through the straps and makes another attempt to write, but it comes out illegible. Blast it. Get inside and take dictation, will you? <laughs> uh... <laughs> You're insane. Okay. You clamber through the open back window, 
and she hands you pen and notebook. You scribble furiously while she dictates the finer qualities of the dust and wind assaulting the car until her voice is hoarse. That'll do. She bangs on the roof. Judith, let's go. <laughs> Move on. The woman who studied dust storms. That's kind of cool. Next up. The baby buffalo lies tangled Aww. by a fence, wire biting into its flesh. Please, it says, I must reach the sanctuary before they find me. The light here has a thin quality. Colors are oddly muted. There's a taste of something old in the air. I would be surprised, but we've run into so many creatures at this point that the talking buffalo isn't really surprising anymore. As who's chasing it? They were hunters of my kind. I am the last born. Every year it repeats. I must run. They must chase. It is the cycle that lets my people survive. You hear hoofbeats. A ways back down the road, a cloud of dust rises. The buffalo struggles. Please. Help me. Okay, free the buffalo. The wire cuts into your hands, but you untangle the animal. The buffalo charges off as soon as it's free. Come on. You glance behind. A trio of riders emerges at the head of the dust cloud. Follow the buff. You run alongside the buffalo. Not far. It grunts. Just ahead. You see the boundary, a line of rocks that mark the border, but the hoofbeats sound close. The ground dips, and the beast stumbles and falls. I'll be on you any second. Oh, uh, this is really stupid, but I'm going to distract the riders, because there's no way I'm going to be able to carry a buffalo, so distract the riders. You stand defiant in uh. the path of the riders. They're coming in fast wreathed in dust, but you hold your nerve. The lead rider veers at the last moment. The other two haul on the reins, sending their horses sliding. You're thrown into the dirt. I lost some health doing that. L look up. The buffalo crosses the line and turns with a defiant bellow, a primal sound that far outstrips its size. It drags its feet through the dirt kicking up a cloud of dust. When it settles, the four are nowhere to be seen. You hear the distant clamor of a herd in motion. Uh, I made its way back to the herd. That's nice, but I'm also, like, tired and losing health, so, uh, let's go, oh god, let's go to Cincinnati. Here, enter Cincinnati. They used to call this place the Paris of America, and it's fitting. The new Union Station makes you feel like an ant, and the music hall is a hell of a place to look at, too. Let's earn money. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. Look for work. It starts to rain in the kind of torrential, tree-stripping way that only happens once or twice a year. Everyone, strambles for, everyone scrambles for cover, but one guy stays out in the street. A fellow with a bale of bent and lopsided umbrellas. Ten cents each, he hollers. What an opportunist. The rain has soaked him through, but he's doing a roaring trade. Hey, he tells you, go run around the main shopping streets and pick up all the umbrellas you see. Okay? People sometimes drop them when they blow outside. I'll pay. Okay. Oh no, I lost health. He's right. There are umbrellas scattered all up and down the streets like fallen birds. You gather up an armful and the umbrella sellers buy them all off of you for a couple coins. The next morning, though, your throat is hoarse and your nose is running like a faucet. Damn it. Uh, okay, well, at least I got some money. So let's go, um, buy a PB&J. So now my health is better. Um, I keep knocking down my health, no matter what I do. I'm just trying to be a good person here, and I always the get The corridors hurt. of Cincinnati's music hall reverberate with the sounds of an orchestra warming up for rehearsal. 
If we unbolt the light rig, we can crush them. Says a voice up ahead. No. Another answers. Hiding Baldi's baton will be sufficient to stop the din. Uh, hey, what, hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, hello. The tuxedoed men are slightly transparent. Mustachio on the right has his arms folded. The weaselly one on the left scowls. They start at your arrival. I'm gonna undo those bolts. Weasel feature vanishes into thin air. Damn it all, <laughs> says the other man. Are you ghosts? We used to be members of the orchestra until, well, you know. Patrick doesn't care for the new blood. It seems like talent died with us, so he does his damnedest to stop them playing. But I can't allow violence against fellow artists. Help me stop him. How do I stop a ghost? With the right tool, you can banish them from the hall. You see, no spirit can stand the sound of the purest of all instruments. Uh, the violin? No. <laughs> the piano? No. What? The saxophone? No. I don't know, the banjo? He shakes his head, exasperated. No. The triangle. The orchestra has one, but their percussionist's a sop. He never hits it right. If you can get there, you can ensure the only thing brutalized here today is Chopin. The triangle? Really? That's the purest instrument? Go into the hall. The orchestra is midway through practice. They're in dire need of it. The percussionist dozes on his stool. Everyone's oblivious to the muttering from the lighting rig. Don't risk it, because uh, every time I risk it, I get hurt. Patrick grunts from above. Nearly. If the lighting rig falls, it's gonna hurt a lot of people. Okay, rush for the triangle. You sprint down the aisle and elbow through the incensed musicians. The percussionist falls off his stool as you clamber over his xylophone. You grab the beater and bring it down onto the triangle, eliciting a pure, resounding note. And... Yes? The rafters ring with laughter. The mustachioed ghost appears next to you, doubled over, invisible to the furious orchestra. <laughs> I never thought you'd fall for that. The triangle, for God's sake. <laughs> Thanks for shutting them up, though. Alright, time to leave. <laughs> this game makes me feel like a fucking dumbass. <laughs> this game is just proving how stupid I am. I'm so gullible. I hate it here. <laughs> I need to sleep somewhere, but I don't know where I can do that, so let's go right here and hear a story. Hey, it's you again. Oh, I've already heard this. This farmer's loitering beside a couple of crates of berries, idly watching the clouds go by. Waiting for the pickup, he says, trying to make small talk. Hey, you want to hear a wild story? Absolutely. He starts telling you about the bottomless lake of clean water. It takes a couple minutes, but you suddenly, but suddenly you recognize it as a story about the winged goat by a pristine water. Whoever told it to the farmer changed, well, a lot, but it's still pretty good. Did you hear that story? Oh, I can't remember, he says. I think I've known it for years, since I was a boy, for sure. Hmm, I can't be right. Um, leave him with his tail, I guess. You thank him for his story and start to mosey off down the road. Keep it cool, friend, he calls after you. Okay, because last time he didn't believe me when I said it happened to me, so I figured, you know. Let's go here. Let's see what this is. Over a shared, crusty loaf of bread, mm. the farmer notices you looking at a prominent, tattered scarecrow in the field. Oh, you like old Barney? No. Nope. You and Sheriff Hayes will get along then. You don't much <laughs> like my little effigy, nor the fella it's based on. Sheriff kept running him out of the barns where he spent the night. Old Barney never hurt nobody. Just a hermit-like. What happened to him? Got so spooked, he done ran off, leaving just the clothes we gave him. 
Sheriff Hayes was a happier man from then on, except when he comes by and sees my scarecrow. Doesn't never look at it. The corn shuffles in the wind, whispering to you. Or is it the scarecrow? Move on. Gotcha. Editing. My bad. I'm actually recording, so, you know. Oh. Do you want to say hi to the camera? <laughs> you can't even see yourself. And I'm too black. Shut up. Bye. Uh, what's over here? Deep in the fields, you come across uh -huh. a group of young men clearing weeds and sod from a roadside plot. Pitchforks flying, weeds dying. You Never almost mind. don't notice that the dark lump beside them is a dozing boy, lying smack dab in the middle of their work. Is he dead? Let's look closer. There's an odd frenzy to the way these boys are ripping the sod apart. When they notice you approaching, they jog over and stand silently between you and their sleeping comrade. Are they burying a corpse? What's going on? The youths share nervous looks. The oldest steps forward. G -g -g Get going, he blurts, leveling a pitchfork at your gut. His hands are shaking. He seems serious. I'm gonna get hurt again. Uh... I'm gonna get hurt if I ask. I feel like he's gonna stab me with the pitchfork. But I'll risk it. Is your friend alright? You step closer, and the ringleader loses his nerve. He died, he blurts. He was sweating and crying, and he just fell over. They won't come get us with the truck till sundown. You realize now that the sleeper's been posed. The ashy shadow on his face wasn't cast by a tree. Move on. Okay. That's great. Anyway. <laughs> Holy shit, this is really messed up. Let's go back up into Ohio. I'm already in Ohio. Let's go back over here to the guy at the campsite. Cause I wanna meet him. Okay, we made it. Hello? Franklin. Why, hello uh -huh. there. Look like that's a heavy bag you're carrying. Let me get that for you. I insist. Wow, he seems happy. Is that a scar on his face? Great big scar. You see this uniform? It means you can trust me to make sure this is the most comfortable journey you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Who Thanks. am I? Well, I'm no George, I'll tell you that. But that's not important. This trip is about you, friend. You got any stories with a bit of excitement to them? Okay. Tell the story of the Thunderbird people who fly when they fall from heights. Maybe. Please. Didn't I hear that story okay. on the radio? <laughs> you told it better, though. Okay, good, good. If you're looking for freedom, just think about how magnificent a train is. How the railroad binds this country together. Hop on and go anywhere. That's freedom, and that's my life. Hey, do you know any spooky stories I can share with the boys tonight? <laughs> Why isn't he on the train? Why has he stopped here? Wouldn't he be with his friends? Um, spooky stories. Uh, tell the story of the silent twins around Philadelphia. I don't think I've told this one to anyone yet. It was pretty creepy. Whoa! You're giving me some good material. My brothers will love that one. I opened the eye all the way. Traps. Imprisonment? Well, there's a difference between a train you have to ride and a train you get to ride. We porters want that difference to be us. Have any optimistic tales? I'd like to hear one of those. Optimistic tales. Not really. <laughs> um. Oh, this might be it. Tell a story of the blessed lighthouse sanctuary where souls in love could find respite. That was pretty optimistic. A positive attitude. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> the past? Uh, that's a tricky thing. Yes. 
porters may remind you of a certain type of way folks of our type used to be. There's no fight in that, just happily working past it. That's a nice mindset. Know any good tragic tales? I feel in the mood for one of those right now. Okay. Say this. Um, not that one. Tell the story of Mason's loss. I think I want to pass around his story more. Didn't expect to, but I'm actually tearing up over here. Aww. Yeah. I got a few miles on me. But I don't think I'll be hearing that phantom train anytime soon. Hopefully not. Doesn't mean I don't make sure to always listen, just in case. <laughs> you seem like you've seen a few spooky things in your time. Wanna share any? Spooky things? Okay, I have more of those for sure. Um. Ah, shoot. Uh, tell the story of the Leatherman whose ghost haunts Connecticut. That one was kind of funny to me. I'm not sure I get yeah. it, friend. Man. Trust. Well, a train ride can be a disorienting experience, especially for a first timer. You gotta have faith that a porter can keep you calm and comfortable. And we've gotta earn that faith each and every time. Another night over. I surely did enjoy all those stories, though. Maybe next time I'll let down my hair a bit. What do you say? <laughs> you must excuse me, friend. What kind of porter am I saying this trip is all about you, only to start talking about my own damn self? <laughs> but enough of my indulgences. I hope I see you again. Toby down towards Indiana. Cool. I liked him. He was sweet. Pullman Porter. Okay. What's Franklin's travels? Nice. Yeah. Huh. Let's go back towards West Virginia and then down in Virginia. So I can work my way down. I'm slowly but surely... Holy shit, we have so much to do. Okay, but I'm really, really excited. Let's... Okay, I still want to keep playing. Huh. The music tends to change as I cross over borders and stuff. Okay, what's over here? The woman finds you as you wander the streets. Come with me, child, she says, looking you up and down. We're going to church. I guess. You follow her to a simple clappered building. There's no steeple, but a cross is painted on one side. I hope she's not going to freaking kill me or something. Inside, you sit for what seems like years as the preacher drones on about the various virtues expected of his faith. Brevity is not among them, apparently. <laughs> huh. Mysterious woman who wanted to go to church. Okay, then. You pass a meadow where migrants have made a oh campsite. Goodness. It's been trampled to pieces. A few families are fleeing, running as fast as they can back up to the roadside. An enormous bull stretches himself beside some of their squashed supplies. Uh, leave it be because I feel like he's gonna kick my ass if I take anything. The bull locks an eye with you and blinks long and slow. The closest thing to a cow threat you've <laughs> seen in your life. You leave him as spoils. Okay, fair enough. Who <laughs> tra terrorized travelers on the road? Yikes. Okay. This man can barely wait to get through the pleasantries before asking if you've heard of this story. 110% true, he says. I heard it from my nephew and it happened to someone he knows well. The man launches into his telling. It's polished. He's obviously done this many times before. He tells you about the Leatherman who has walked a route across Connecticut for 200 years. You recognize it as the bones from your experience of the leather man whose ghost haunts Connecticut. It's been embellished in the inter interim, though. Listen to the tale. Afterwards, you thank the man and move onwards. You have to remember that version. Even, even if it's not quite what happened, it's a good story. <laughs> Looks like that one's completely done. Okay, cool. So... Now we're done with 
West Virginia, so we can move over into Virginia, and then it looks like there's a, one, more, one more person there that I can talk to. And maybe if I have time, I'll visit Quinn. Yeah, let's go east. Looks like there's quite a few stories over here. Faded shotgun houses sit in rows under the tall shadows of smokestacks. A worker in full uniform hollers from a porch. Hey, traveler! Join me inside! Got some literature here! He seems like a friendly fellow. Go inside. As you shut the door, the man glances out the window and draws the shades. Landlord toss you out? Ha! <laughs> Don't mind me, I, it's none of my business. He pries up a floorboard with a crowbar. Watch. You glance over the man's shoulder to see inside the compartment. Canned goods, a pile of leaflets, the wood stock of a rifle. He replaces the board and stands. Look away. He hands you a can of whole potatoes. Then a leaflet which reads, Why'd I lose hunger? No evictions, no fascists, no hunger. Headed back to the shop, but we'll have a Bible meet soon. Bible meet? Bible meet. If you don't know James 5 1 by heart, learn it. That's our favorite scripture. James 5 1. Move on. I don't know what that was about. Now I'm really curious. I literally have my Bible right here. Hold on. James 5.1. Is that what he said? I don't even know if this is going to mean anything. 5.1. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Okay. That was great. Anyway, <laughs> what's this over here? Now I'm really curious. A sign in town says a farmer is hiring for the sugarcane harvest. A bag-eyed man drives you and ten hungry strangers out into the cane, where he leaves you. Everyone gets a hatchet, but no instruction. The foreman is missing for some reason. Nobody is sure what to do. Oh, great. A young man in a red jacket stuffs all the hatchets in his pack. This is stupid, he says. I'm leaving. You can get five bucks for a nice axe like this. He marches off into the cane and others follow. Don't, a young woman shouts after them. It's not right. <laughs> you don't know the farmer's shit, or she's right. She's right, don't just steal his axes and run off. The thief left some hatchets behind. So you and the three chumps left start chopping cane. It's brutal work. None of you know what you're doing. Keep going, the girl calls. Her hands are bleeding, and her face is bright with sweat. Soon, her cane is piled high. Chop, chop, chop. Sometime after noon, the truck rolls up with a boozy foreman riding shotgun. Good work, he croaks. The girl wipes her blood-pinked hands on her apron to take her pay, but doesn't notice the crumpled body in the back of the truck or the hatchets heaped beside it. Um, so he, did he kill everyone who stole the hatchets? Okay. Okay, switch here. The soldier sits in the dirt with his legs splayed out, like a child would sit. Beneath the tattered fabric of his antique uniform, several open wounds fester in the hot sun. Lend a hand, traveler? Uh, help the man. You kneel in front of the soldier. His body is marked with bullet holes along with deeper wounds that could be from knives or bayonets. Maggots squirm inside the raw, red flesh. About time I earned an amputation. You seen any blue bellies around? Blue bellies? The soldier leans in, 
uncomfortably close to inspect your features. Were his pupils solid white before now? He tilts his head, narrows his eyes, sniffs you. What are you, stranger? Back away. Where you going, Yankee? A bowie knife flies past your head, so close the wind tickles your ear. It sticks in a tree with a solid thump that clears the squirrels and birds out of the branches. When you look back, the wounded soldier's nowhere to be found. Move on. Okay, I need to stop trusting people so easily. It always screws me over. Okay, so I have found everything in Tennessee. Oh my god, wait. How did I get here? Okay, I don't know how I got here. But that's okay. I guess I'll go up further to Virginia. <laughs> I keep missing Virginia by a long shot. Let's go meet this person at the campsite and then I think I will end the episode there. I, I massively underestimated how long this game is going to take me to finish. That's fine, but I'm excited. Okay. Althea. Ooh. I wanted to be the best blues singer in the world. By God, I was. <laughs> I like the art for her. I was born a poor girl in Memphis, Tennessee. No father. He run out. No mama either. She was there, but she weren't there really. All alone before my Uncle Richard. My baby brother Marcus. All alone but for the guitar. Ooh, you got any stories with a bit of excitement to them? The guitar. Okay, let's see. Everyone wants an exciting story and I can never figure out what I want it to be. Um, thrilling story. The women arrested for bootlegging in Maine. I feel like that one's kind of lame, but... Uh, let's try that one, I guess. Oh. <laughs> well, you know some wild ones. I like that. Okay, good. Authority. <laughs> well, the man, he told me he loved my songs. But when we got to Chicago, I knew he just loved my story. Little black girl all alone in the world. And would you tell the audience what this song means, child? I'm in the mood for a good, hopeful story. You got any? Okay, um... I feel like the best one to tell for that is just the lighthouse one. <laughs> hmm. It's good to light the darkness every once in a while. I don't like to think about the past. When I lay down to bed now, I hear Marcus cry out to me. He's hungry, he says. When I was a girl, all I wanted was to help him. Now I'm in the mood for a story with a bit of that tragedy to it. Okay. Tell the story of the boy who died in the fields where no one could be called to collect his body near Cincinnati. That one's kind of tragic, I think. That's like a song. Pretty and sad. I wasn't one to accept death. To live beside it, that wasn't my way. Now I told myself I was running away to take care of my brother Marcus. But I was just running. I'm in the mood for a good, hopeful story. You got any? Ah, you already wanted a hopeful story, lady. I'm running out here. Um, tell the story of the newspaper reporter with strictly positive views around Cleveland. <laughs> he was pretty hopeful, but didn't make me hopeful. Just don't get that yeah. one, I'm afraid. Some right. folks got choices. I was choosing between having nothing and having something. I didn't know it was a devil's bargain then. Ooh, now I'm in the mood for a story with a bit of that tragedy to it. Again? Okay. Let me see. Tell the story of the couple parted by unemployment. Let's try that. I drink to that. <laughs> Love. Well, I, I would have done anything for my brother. 
anything here. Ah, the sun is up. One more night gone. I need to be going. If you want to hear <laughs> more about the deal I made, you can look for me up the road this way. That's really cool. I was about 25 when I left my first record contract. No more richer than I was before. Those men took me around like a freak show. Me and my guitar and my sad songs. I didn't know what to do once I was free again. Alone, drinking my sorrows. That's where the devil found me. Hmm. She's really cool, I like her. Blue singer. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this episode off here. Um, we got quite a bit more done in the northeast side of the country here. There's still a lot more that we have to do. There's a lot more characters that we can meet and a lot more stories to listen to and spread around. This game is so much fun so far. I'm really, really enjoying it. I just love talking to everyone and learning their stories and figuring out what options to pick and what's the best option because I feel like half the time I picked really really bad options and I'm sorry about that. I'm still learning how this game works and I'm trying my best. Uh, it's definitely a game where it has a lot of replayability, is that a word? Where, I mean, depending on what you can choose, depending on what you choose, you come out with a very different outcome, I think, every time. So I really, really enjoy that aspect of it. I hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough so far. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know which character is your favorite so far. Quinn is probably my favorite, but I also really like um, Athea. She was pretty cool, the one we just met, and Franklin. He seemed happy-go-lucky, although we didn't really hear much about him, so I'm excited to meet him again and, and talk a bit more. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you're new because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch me play some video games. That is all for me today. I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.